Hello everyone, I wanted to do a follow up to a previous video where I was discussing the deb to snap transition which is occurring in Ubuntu 19.10. So with the package Chromium, it will no longer be supplied as a deb format package, it will be forced as a snap package. Now this change will also be backported into the previous supported releases of Ubuntu. So it's quite a transition which is occurring, but okay, it's only been happening with one package so far. Now in the previous video, I argued that there would be an issue with the theming, but I suppose in concept, it can be a good idea. But there's a few more points I want to discuss in this video, and it's based on some of the comments as well. So let's start with the information about what deb packages are. So it's a packaging format used in Debian and Ubuntu. Packages are supplied in a central repository, and library files can be shared between one or more applications. So there's dependencies within the applications, so it calls upon various packages and other dependencies to be installed at the same time. In concept is a really good idea, and it does help reduce disk space in that the library files can be used between multiple applications. So yeah, great idea there. Doesn't take into any consideration the sandboxing <laughs> that doesn't exist under the dev package formats, although it can be done through cell Linux. So there's other tools that can do sandboxing in Linux, but yeah, by default, no, it doesn't really happen. Although you can get into a dependency nightmare if you want to uplift a specific application where it does have dependencies that could be used by other applications. And the trouble is the version numbers do get fixed. So if you try upping library files for one application, you're gonna to have to hope this other application using the same library files can cope with that different version. Now that is where you can get into a dependency nightmare. To solve that problem, Canonical have released another packaging format called Snaps where all dependencies are included in the one application. Now it does have a downside in that you need more disk space because those various library files which you could have shared between multiple applications will now have to be supplied by each application. But it does also have advantages in that the snap packages can just be built up once and then spread across different Linux distributions and versions. The dev packages are actually dependent on the version of the operating system. So you can end up having to package for quite a few different releases of Ubuntu uh, well, and Debian as well. So yeah, it's a lot more work to build for a dev based system, potentially. Although seeing some of the comments here that snaps also can be a lot of work. So I'm not gonna touch on that at all. I'm not a developer. I don't know the ins and outs about how difficult it is to compile for different package formats. What I care about though is usability. And that is where we can get into a bit of downsides with snaps. On the subject of usability, what I would like to do is open up a spreadsheet from any application into LibreOffice. Now I have the snap version of LibreOffice and that causes issues with the sandboxing because the directory I'm trying to open from is not available to the sandboxed application. So it's actually denied my request to open that document but I can open it from another application which I installed using the deb packages. So yeah, that's a sandboxing issue because I've not allowed access to that document area. And there can also be issues accessing removable storage areas. And now to discuss theming, and this is one of my real bugbears with snaps that the theming is not a complete seamless drop-in for each desktop. So I'm using KDE here, and while it has managed to integrate the menus quite nicely, it has not managed to integrate the mouse cursor. See, that is not the same mouse cursor. So I have the Breeze mouse cursor there, and then if I hover over the Snap application, I've gone to some other stock mouse cursor. Ubuntu itself has some theming issues, although the mouse cursor looks okay there. Let's take a look at the menus here in GIMP. See, we have dark highlighting. So yeah, looks a bit odd there. What has Inkscape got? Oh, we got light menus and light highlighting. So actually, I can't really see what menu I'm in there. Am I an object? Oh, don't know, very difficult to see. Now compare that to, well, let's open up LibreOffice. Looking at menus in LibreOffice, yeah, that's got some nice, beautiful styling there. Well, yeah, it, even in Ubuntu, and this is Ubuntu 1910 development, that is not a seamless drop-in. Although I have to say that startup speed is a lot better now. And this was a caching issue with the fonts, so solving that issue earlier in the year has enabled snaps to launch much quicker, and I have to say it's not too noticeable compared to launching a dev package. So in that instance, it is a seamless transition. I don't know if I'm launching a snap or a dev there, and that's how it should be. It should be a case of, I don't know the difference between the application because it should be completely seamless. 
it is on speed of opening, less so for usability. Now a comment about snap wasting disk space, and this is something they've addressed in this post in the Ubuntu forums, in that the specific instance of Chromium does show different sizes between the dev package and the snap package, with the snap actually being slightly smaller. And I'm thinking, hmm, this is surprising. So you're saying that the package with everything that's had to be supplied in it is smaller than the one that can share different packages. Although you could say with Chromium, how many library files does it share with other applications? And probably there it may not at all really. So yeah, this is going to be one of the packages that doesn't really matter which you have, Snap or Deb. But that's not a true figure there, despite what they're actually saying. Hmm. If I go back to this virtual machine and get the information on the GIMP installed size and Inkscape installed size, and I'll compare that to the host operating system, which has the equivalent packages in deb format. So let's find Inkscape. So there we go. So we have 17 meg for Inkscape, whereas the snap was, oh, 229. And Inkscape was 183 compared to the deb format of 79. Now, I don't believe those numbers for a single second because that's not taken into account all the packages. But with the snaps, they've told me an install size. So OK, I'll go across to GIMP. I've got one folder here. What's the size of it? Huh, 830 meg. GIMP 229 meg. Well, that's a little bit different. Inkscape, 183 meg. What's the size on the hard drive? 707 meg. That's a bit different again. But surely that's just going to be a coincidence. I mean, what about my host operating system? So LibreOffice, 440 meg. Let's see what we've got here. LibreOffice is 1.6 gig. One feature of Snaps, and it's something I haven't discussed, is the updating. Updating can be carried out up to four times a day. And one feature they've added is the ability to have automatic tests be carried out on the application to make sure the update works perfectly. And if it doesn't, it will roll back to a previous version. Hence the need to have two versions. While some expert users will be miffed about having their choice of doing updates robbed from them, I can at least see the advantages with the way it's been done here because with the automatic testing, you know you will be left with a release of a snap that is working. And if the latest version does break, then it'll automatically roll back to the previous version. But compare that to doing updates on like dev packages or even let's say a different operating system, let's say Windows or Mac. You may read a news story about how the latest update does break with certain hardware or software combinations, but would it actually break it on your system? I don't know, did I do the testing? Hmm, who's to say? But it would be a manual effort of testing. Yes, it does take a manual choice away from you, but perhaps the more novice user should just be applying updates regardless. In this situation, I do believe that snaps do have an advantage, but only with that caveat of the automated testing. Otherwise, it could just be really annoying and wasteful on bandwidth. But I suppose one instance of where they're looking at high number of updates being useful is on Internet of Tat devices or Internet of Things devices. And I should mention that is where sandboxing could have a real advantage. But before I leave disk space and move on to the next subject, I want to take a comparison of the dev packages. How do they compare on the number of uh, packages that they have in reserve? So just taking a look here, we actually do see I've got at least a couple of versions in reserve. In fact, I counted it as four previous versions in reserve. So in some ways that is also wasteful. But on the other hand, if you do get a breakage on the latest update, you do have the ability to roll dev packages backwards although it can be quite painful to do. But now let's move on to the security implications. And just having a quick look around, I found this vulnerability in SnapD that gives root access in Linux. Okay, great, that was fixed earlier in the year. So that vulnerability came about in February 2019. That's not necessarily to pick on snaps. I just wanted to show one example of it happening. I could go and find many examples of how other Linux software does also have vulnerabilities. But one point I have seen quite a few people talking about is how a crypto mining piece of malware was found in an Ubuntu Snap application. This was back in 2018, and I have to say Canonical's response on the subject was actually really good. They wrote up a whole piece about what this developer had been doing. 
I'll pick out a few key points about this. So it's a game where a cryptocurrency miner was installed which would use the user's resources. This was completely undisclosed that the application would be doing this. But they do raise a question, was it evil, naive or interesting? So first question worth asking in this case is whether the publisher was in fact doing anything wrong considering that mining cryptocurrency is not illegal or unethical by itself. That perspective was taken by the publisher in question here, who informed us the goal was to monetize the software published under licenses that allow it. Unaware of the social or technical consequences, the publisher offered to stop doing it once contacted. Of course it is misleading if there is no indication of the secondary purpose of the application. That's in fact why the application was taken down from the store, there are no rules against mining cryptocurrencies, but misleading users is a problem. So perhaps in this situation I would call this a potentially unwanted program or potentially unwanted application rather than an a piece of malware. So I was trying to find an instance where equivalent behaviour had been detected in another application regardless of the packaging format. In fact I was trying to find something that didn't happen to a snap based application. A lot of news articles you'll get about how cryptocurrency has been detected in an application is due to a vulnerability, an underlying vulnerability or an underlying poor password that allows the server or computer to be exploited and have a currency miner installed upon it. And that'd be a malicious install. But perhaps there was a time where backdoor code was found in a popular bootstrap SAS Ruby library. Not exactly what I'm thinking about. A uh, similar thing with a malicious Python library. No. Package containing malicious backdoor makes its way into NPM. Not really. Uh, we have backdoor put into Linux Mint downloads. Yeah, that happened. That was back in 2016. No, that was maliciously done. We have poor usage of certain server-based applications, Let's say MongoDB, plenty of databases have been left exposed on the internet. And that's poor usage due to the user. But I think I finally stumbled upon one here. Backdoor found in utility for Linux, and this was the Webmin application. The Webmin source code had been maliciously modified to add a non-obvious vulnerability, and this was compromised back in 2018. The interesting point with Webmin, it's been compiled to be available in deb format, RPM format, and yeah, different formats other than snaps. So, we have an almost equivalent issue, although this wasn't necessarily done by the application owner, but, but rather a malicious actor. And I wanted to make the point this isn't a specific issue towards Linux. This is an issue in general with application distribution, that we had an instance of the Avast owned security application CCleaner getting infected with malware. Hackers hid a backdoor in it. So yeah, it doesn't really matter about the packaging format or the operating system. But on the subject of Windows, why is it Microsoft have to try and say that Windows Defender can detect 100% of prevalent malware? It's like, well done, you can detect 100% of known cases of malware. Hurrah. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just being cynical at the end there because yeah, Malware has been inserted into an application and it, uh, it's not obvious when it happens. But does it mean you'll necessarily be better off with or without snaps? Um, no, I have to say that snaps do have their usages. I can certainly see them being able to protect Internet of Tat devices, sorry, Internet of Things devices, a lot better than dead based packages can. For example, with poor programming, it could introduce more vulnerabilities into the device. Now the sandboxing could limit the extent these vulnerabilities could be abused. And it may be reduced down to the extent where it would be a localized denial of service to the single device, rather than a fully compromised root user takeover. But I don't believe we're ready for this full deb to snap transition, particularly when there are still theming issues present. If snaps were so seamless that I could not tell whether I was running a deb package or a snap package, then I would say, Yes, you're at that point, you can carry out the deb to snap transition. But right now, I would say this is far too premature. Get the theme issues sorted, get the usability issues sorted, then yes, you are there. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.